Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of number systems. So in the last video we talked about what are natural numbers, what are whole numbers, how people might have come up with them. And we also described or discussed a problem, we ended up actually with a problem thinking that what if, uh, because uh, they were in a business of, they were in a business right, they were trading. So what if they want to account for, for a profit or loss and how they should solve that problem. So that was a problem actually. So people knew only what is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. But then what if uh, a loss occurs? What if my bank balance or in my bag, <laughs> I don't have any coins but then I also borrowed some coins from, from a friend. Let's say I borrowed 5 coins from a friend and that means I owe it to a friend, right? And I don't have any coins. So how do I write that down? How do I mention it? Because this is definitely doesn't sound like uh, increase in your account, right? This is definitely a depreciation. So how did people solve that problem? One of the things that they came up with was instead of creating symbol for numbers, they created two very special symbols. They created something like this, which they decided to call positive. or dhana in Sanskrit and they also introduced this symbol or negative they which they decided to call negative or rina and this was not a symbol as a, as a number but this was meant as a suffix to the number so whenever I would have more coins in my bag I would add this symbol plus. So if I say if I have four coins in my bag, that is vriddhi in my or that is increase in my account balance, I would I would represent it with plus. But if I owe it to someone or if I lose it, I would use a negative symbol, which was rena. And that opened up whole new possibilities because now we have two very different numbers representing two very different or opposite things, right? Now how, the question still remains that now, now we have so many different things. First of all, how do we organize it? One of the basic question was that when you count something, when you count coins or when you count any other entity visually, you can see. So when I count something of four or five, I can see, even if it is zero, I can see that it is not there. How do I see, how do I visualize negative 4 or negative 5. I can't see how negative 5 looks like. I think for me it looks like something like empty spaces where 5 of anything can fit. That is that is what my interpretation for negative 5 is. So that's when let's say let's take an example okay because we are talking about business so to quickly understand it further, let's take an example. Let's say if I have, I owe my friend five coins. So I can say that my balance is negative five. This means that even if I manage to earn five coins somehow from somewhere, first I will have to pay back to my friend to balance the scale, which is slightly tilting to the left. Now these are very interesting terms. So basically it was all about having a balance, right? Whenever you will have negative of something, your scale is, will tilt a little bit towards left and whenever you have positive of something, your scale will tilt a little bit towards right, right? That introduced an idea of a number line, right? So people have imagined that let's say, let's do one thing. All the numbers which are dhana or positive, let's put them on the right hand side. So positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, positive 5, positive 6 and positive 7 all went to the right side. Just quickly give me order. And all the numbers which are negative, we can put it on the left side. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, all went to the left side. And the most important symbol which would balance this whole scale 
would be in the middle and that is 0. Right? And that's how number line topology was introduced. Now, invention or creation of this number line or this whole new system which we today we call it integers. Right? So this is called integer numbers. Which is consistent, which consists positive, all the positive numbers, all the negative numbers, and zero. Right? This introduction of this was a huge breakthrough in the in the evolution of mathematics. It did not only open the possibilities of whole new arithmetic operations, but it also may, might have helped in development of coordinate geometry and trigonometry later on. Right? So I hope uh, this video uh, you find it helpful and in the next video we will talk about uh, entirely new number system which was one step after the integer number systems. Happy exploring!